2001, Daniel Jones was his obsession. He was fixated. He desperately wanted her. She was the schoolgirl of his dreams. Danielle rejected him. He killed her and kept her for himself forever. She belongs to him. The day Danielle returns home, he will be free. Will he ever choose to be free? Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel where we talk about real crimes and real people. This is the kidnapping and murder of Danielle Jones. Wanna know what happened? Let's get started. Danielle Sarah Jones was born on October 16, 1985 in East Tilbury, Essex, England. Her parents are Anthony and Linda Jones. She has two siblings, Ryan and Mitchell. She was a normal teenager who loved to sing pop songs. She liked her pet rabbits, pop band Steps, and singer Robbie Williams. Danielle attended St. Clair School in Stamford La Hope. She wanted to work with children after leaving school. And on her way to school, Danielle disappeared forever. On the morning of June 18, 2001, Danielle was seen walking to a bus stop near East Tilbury. She was running late, but Danielle never showed up at school. Danielle's parents were living a nightmare. She was missing. After five days of Danielle being missing, suspicious fell on Stuart Campbell, Danielle's uncle. Authorities believe she had been kidnapped. On June 23rd, Stuart Campbell was arrested, taken into questioning where he was uncooperative. He stated he was 30 minutes away at a do-yourself store in Rayleigh. The police didn't believe him. They believe he knew where Danielle was and were hoping he would lead them to her so they didn't put pressure on Stuart as a way to protect Danielle because they thought she was still alive. So they released him on bail. On June 24th, searches were underway in the hopes of finding Danielle Jones. After Danielle went missing, family and friends texted her repeatedly, but she never answered back. Surprisingly, she allegedly sent two texts after she went missing to Stuart Campbell. On June 30th, the public joined the police to search the fields and marshlands of South Village of East Tilbury. Police got the information that a blue transit van was seen in the area, and witnesses saw a girl talking to a male driver. Stewart also had a blue transit van. On July 9, divers searched the lake near Danielle's home. On July 12, three boys came forward saying they had seen Danielle on the morning of June 18. By August, Linda, Danielle's mother, had lost hope Danielle would be found alive. She believed Danielle was in fact dead. In the same month, the Joneses and the police handed out leaflets. On August 16, after receiving new information, the police searched a building site in Grays but found nothing. Eventually, the police arrested Stuart Campbell on August 17, 2001. The police searched Stuart Campbell's house and getting to know the inside of Stuart's private life would turn out to be like opening Pandora's box and inside of it was deprivation and the secrets of a dangerous man. Stuart Campbell was born on February 21, 1958 in Malden, Essex. He was a builder. When he was in his 20s, he started a relationship with Debbie, a 15 year old girl who became his wife. Stuart was a depraved predator who had preference for young school girls with ages between 14 and 15. He had a criminal record. In 1976, he got a four year jail term for robbing a girl. In 1989, he was convicted of forcibly detaining a 14 year old girl in his house and taking inappropriate photos of her. Taking photos of young girls and keep them as a trophy was his thing. He used to photograph girls as they walked past his house. He approached girls in the streets pretending to be a representative of a modeling agency, one of the oldest tricks of depraved men. He would tell them he was a photographer, invite them to his house and manipulated them into taking inappropriate photos of them. While searching his house, the police found a canvas bag and in it were white blood stained stockings. 
DNA testing matched the blood stains to Danielle and Stewart's blood. They found Danielle's lip gloss at his house. They found his diary, where he wrote about his obsession with teenage girls. He was obsessed with pornography, checking regularly a website called Young Lolita Beauties. They found in his diary details of his relationship with his niece. He texted her constantly. He left handwritten notes in her bedroom. He called her Princess, the same name he called his wife when she was just 15. The police believed Danielle and Stewart were intimate. Danielle tried to disengage, but he wouldn't let it go. Forensic analysis of the text sent from Danielle's phone to Stewart showed the text might have been written by Stewart and not Danielle. Danielle usually texted in lowercase, but the texts were in uppercase. Regarding the word choices, she usually wrote the word what as what, but after she went missing, it changed to what. Authorities believed Stewart wrote those texts and sent them to himself to make it look like Danielle was still alive. Also, phone records showed both phones were together for 30 hours in Stewart's house after Danielle went missing, suggesting his alibi that he had been away was in fact a lie. At the time the texts were sent to him, the phones were near to each other and at his house. Even though he was confronted with evidence which suggested Danielle was in fact dead and he had killed her, Stewart refused to admit killing Danielle and confess where her body was up until this day. On November 14, 2001, Stewart Campbell was charged with murder and abduction. October 2002, he went to trial. Several testimonies stated he manipulated young girls into posing for topless photographs. Several women came forward stating they were abused by Stewart when they were teenagers. A witness stated she had seen Danielle crying in the toilet of Gray's Library Essex on the morning she vanished. She was upset. She was seen talking or arguing with a man in a blue Ford Transit van and then left in it. Rumors were she was becoming uneasy about Stewart's obsession with her and tried to keep distance. On December 19, 2002, Stuart Campbell was found guilty of murder and abduction. In the judge's statements about the crime, Stuart allegedly had a close relationship with Danielle. Until June 4th, he had consistent contact with her. He was obsessed with her. He wanted to photograph her. He was interested in schoolgirls age 14 and 15. And through the years, he manipulated underage girls. On June 18, 2001, Danielle was late on her way to school. Stewart took Danielle, pretending to taking her to school, and instead he took her home, where he killed her. He then sent texts from Danielle's phone to his to make it look like she was still alive, and he also disposed of her body. Stewart Campbell was sentenced to life in prison for murder. He was sentenced to 10 years for abduction. And these two sentences were to run concurrently. He should get parole after 20 years. However, due to Ellen's law and because Stewart refused to say where Danielle's body is, Stewart Campbell is still incarcerated. In May 2017, Essex and Ken police search a garage block in Stifford Clay's Thurrock after receiving new information. New information they received in 2001 and never followed up. Allegedly, around the time Danielle disappeared, suspicious activity took place around those garages. After the search, authorities still didn't find Danielle's remains. By relinquishing his freedom, Stewart keeps Danielle forever for himself. It's the ultimate possession. She belongs to him. If he says where her remains are, he will have to let her go. And after all this time, he will not do it. Stewart Campbell is a dangerous man. If he ever becomes free, he will, allegedly, search for another young victim to be obsessed with. Men like Stewart are predators who should be locked away forever.